Hello everyone. As a sailor for over two decades, I developed an interest and fascination to observe nature and learn from her. Today, I want to share through my personal journey a nature's toolkit or framework that I created for myself to help me make better decisions and take more effective actions. These lessons from the seas, storms, rivers, and forests have helped me make better choices for my health, my finances, in my profession, and in my business now. During my teen years, around the age of 14, I had this deep desire to sail on the seas. And I realized to do that, one had to join the Navy. It didn't matter to me whether I joined the Indian Navy or the Merchant Navy. All I wanted to do was sail on the seas. It didn't matter to me if I sailed as captain, cadet or crew. All I wanted to do was to sail on the seas. Looking back, my burning desire to sail on the seas almost felt like a river's desire to seek the ocean. Imagine you are a river. So what's your ultimate desire to seek the vast boundless ocean or the sea, right? The river being your desire and the ocean your goal. The river starts its humble beginnings high up in the mountains, like your thoughts. But its journey is filled with adventures. Initially like a tiny trickle, the river goes through gently downhill, later meandering through rocky terrain, all the challenges that will come in your life, through lush meadows and multitude of other adventures before it reaches the ocean. What would happen if the river were to stop at every boulder and say, sorry, can't go ahead, boulder ahead. But instead, what does it do? It simply goes around it, over it, under it, keeps seeking the ocean. What would happen if the river were to stop when it has to cut through a dark, dense forest? Would it get scared and stop? it would simply cut through this forest again seeking the ocean. Let's apply this reverse wisdom to our lives. To navigate life more successfully, you need to have the clarity of your desire or what you are seeking, like the river. You need to pursue your goal like the river. You need to overcome your obstacles like the river. I've observed that there are three lessons that nature gives us that can help us succeed in our goals. The first lesson is find your burning desire and that means find that spark. Find, be clear about that burning desire because this will help you choose your career, choose your profession or your life's path. A burning desire that isn't someone else's but your own. Again, you may choose to do nothing about your burning desire, but that's a choice. Is burning desire alone enough to succeed? No. So the second lesson from the river or the nature is follow it with relentless action. That means go take, be ready for those difficult moments. Be ready to do the hard work because only then can you achieve it. That means leave no stone unturned until you achieve your results. In my pursuit to join the Navy, I faced many challenges. No one in my family or friends knew how to join the Navy and I had no clue either. So I would spend many weekends visiting bookstores to read up books, talking to the store manager or just about anyone I would ask them for guidance. Apart from studying hard, I would also spend time doing things that I thought would help me get into the Navy, like improving my physical fitness or uh, learning swimming, reading self-help books. So I thought I could embrace a more positive mindset. It also took a lot of courage for me to stand up against everyone, especially my parents, teachers and friends to follow something that they were not able to comprehend or empathize. 
It was scary to be going against their wishes. What if they were right and I was wrong? What if I made a fool of myself by choosing wrongly? But I decided to go ahead rather than give up on my dream. I knew getting into the Navy meant not just studying hard, but also giving in my best effort and possibly some sacrifices as well. One of the sacrifices as I remember was to give up watching television because I was getting hooked to it. And I realized that if giving up this little pleasure meant a higher chance of getting into the Navy, then I was willing to take it. The only real power that you have is over your effort and your time and what you do with it. I have seen many times people give up on their dreams or goals because they don't see immediate results and I am no exception to it. And I have to constantly keep reminding myself of the nature's way of life, of taking relentless action and keep trying. The third lesson from nature is to take the path of least resistance. That means, don't change your path, simply don't change your goal, change your path and adapt like the river. Life is like a river's journey filled with hurdles and my path was no different. I gave the exams to both the Indian Navy and Merchant Navy and awaited the results. During this time, my dad suffered a heart attack and he was hospitalized for days. He was the only earning member in my family and if something happened to him meant not only losing my father but also giving up my dream of sailing. I was frustrated and sad that things were not in my control. After a month or so, things turned around and he started to recover. But I lost the opportunity to join the Indian Navy. Meanwhile, I got a seat in engineering and started attending the classes. I wasn't happy because my heart wasn't into engineering, but I wasn't going to waste my time either. I had already started thinking and planning how I could give the exams better next year, how I could get into this Navy. Mentally, I was prepared to keep trying year after year to get into the Navy or until I couldn't do it because of the age bar. A few months into engineering, I got a letter saying that I got selected into the Merchant Navy. I was overjoyed, ecstatic, beaming with a smile. I was also scared and skeptical. What if my parents didn't support this decision? What if they turned it down? I had many heated conversations with my parents on how important this was for me and that I was willing to take full responsibility for my choices and the consequences even if things didn't turn out well. People around me advised that it would be foolish for me to give up my engineering because I had gotten into a good branch in a good college, all of which meant campus placements and later job opportunities abroad. I had three choices before me, one, to continue with my engineering, two, to try again for the Indian Navy next year, or three, to take up a career in Merchant Navy. It was a difficult decision, especially as a teenager, and I, had, I was filled with doubts. So I asked myself one question, what is it that I really wanted in life? and which of these options was going to get me there faster and sooner. So I took the path of least resistance, I gave up my seat in engineering and set sail as a merchant navy cadet working my way up to become the captain. The path of least resistance does not mean breaking or bypassing any laws, moral, legal, ethical. The path of least resistance does not mean taking the easy way out because you are lazy or scared.
the path of least resistance means that a path that comes readily to you when you have been trying and trying but you are stuck somewhere or maybe you are ready to quit. This path may come as a new path to you, as an opportunity, as an advice, as a mentor, someone stepping up to help you or a new option that opens up that you didn't know exist before. The common thing that I've observed is people get stuck to their path in the pursuit of their goal or give up on their goal because it seems impossible to achieve via their path. The nature's lesson is don't change your goal, simply change your path and adapt like the river. You don't have to, the nature's toolkit you can apply not only for important decisions like life decisions, career decisions, but also for trivial day to day decisions. If I asked you to pick one object, say the cup, spoon or the plate, what would you pick? Some may pick the spoon, some may pick the cup, some may pick the plate and some may ask, it depends, what am I going to do with it? You are absolutely right, your choice will depend on what you are seeking or what you are going to do with it. Let us take an example, say you decide to go on a camping trip, it is a tough trail, you climb up the hills, you pass a few small villages en route before you reach a scenic riverside camping spot. You unpack your things, you pitch your tent and you carried along with you your cup, spoon and the plate and most of all you are looking forward to sitting by this riverside watching the sunset and drinking this hot cup of coffee. But you soon realize the cup is broken, it leaves you a little frustrated and angry that things aren't going as planned. And there are a few choices before you. One, don't drink the coffee, give up, it is simply not meant to be. Two, you are not someone who gives up easily, so you decide to walk to the nearby village and get yourself a cup. Three, you decide to pour this hot coffee onto your plate and slurp it away. Let us say you go with option three, because your goal was to drink coffee watching the sunset by this riverside. It was not exactly to drink from this cup or that cup. So, you took the path of least resistance which could get to your goal. When you adopt this nature's toolkit, I have noticed that you will be much more happier and content. You will accomplish your goal much faster you will complain less and you will develop the quality of adaptability and resourcefulness, a vital 21st century skill. Maybe you are already taking such an option, accidentally perhaps, or maybe a friend or a family member takes this approach. What I am doing here is giving it more shape and form to a wisdom that already exists amidst us. So, such moments are not occasional or by chance. You can now use this framework more consistently, deliberately and mindfully to make better choices and take more effective actions. Nature is full of such wisdom. Observe a tree standing tall in a forest. What is its goal? To seek that life-giving sunlight. Have you observed how trees have sometimes bent around houses? or bent around other trees or rocks, all the while seeking sunlight. Ideally, a tree would like to grow straight up, who does not? But when there is an obstacle in its way, what does it do? It does not stop or complain, it simply changes its path and takes the route of least resistance to get to its goal, sunlight. To apply this wisdom in your life, you need to be first clear of what your burning desire is. It does not have to make sense to anyone else, but it should be your own. Because then you will be able to choose your course or college, you will be able to choose where to intern, 
you will be able to choose what to start as your entrepreneurial journey you will be able to know how to decide in your profession or in business my burning desire was to sail on the seas and after 20 years of sailing and becoming the captain this deep desire was met a few years back in 2016 a new desire emerged to help people find their spark and help them carve their own path of destiny this vision led me to start my own organization and educational initiative this meant i had to change my path from being a sailor to an educator entrepreneur and a coach today i flow like a new river scary at times at what lies ahead because this is a new journey to me sometimes stormy nights at sea seem more familiar and comforting but i know that this is a different journey and the new choices which come before me which i'm unfamiliar with and each time i try to adopt the nature's framework for myself to become the captain of your life to steer your own life course the way you would like it to go you need to first take responsibility for your choices and consequences because once you do that you'll be able to accomplish your goals much easier no matter how daunting it appears at first nature's wisdom has been tried and tested by nature itself and is one of the easiest guides for you to become a creator of your own destiny or to succeed in your goal follow the three lessons of nature one find your burning desire two follow it with relentless action and three take the path of least resistance where you must don't change your goal simply change your path and adapt thank you